Can I dispatch? Ambulance dispatch. Ambulance dispatch. Is she breathing? Tell me exactly what happened. We're inside an ambulance dispatch center. Is she changing color? Urgent calls come in to places like this across the country. Okay. okay. Is he bleeding or vomiting blood? An ambulance can be the difference between life or death. But we're on our way. So why are so many Canadians afraid to call for help? 10 4. All right, they're on their way. This week on Marketplace. Worrying about the bills when you're worrying about your child dying, those two things should not be in the same picture. Canadians who can't afford to call 911, risking their lives. I think it's robbery. Paramedics having to convince people to take an ambulance at critical times. Don't they were worry. actually worried. Absolutely. They, want to go with they you. wouldn't go with us. If almost half the people in your province are saying they might delay calling an ambulance, doesn't that tell you there's something wrong with the system? We ask why there's no free ride. We're on our way to meet someone who's had to make a desperate call for an ambulance more than once. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hi America. Sarah Busis Gunn's older daughter, Leandra, was born with a life-threatening illness. She has seizures, trouble breathing. Supergirl! Her medical needs were so extreme. She needed the ambulance a lot. I think the first time we called, she had a seizure that just wouldn't stop. To Sarah's surprise, after that first ambulance trip, she gets a bill. If you are having a true emergency, like you need medical help or you will die, I did not realize that you got a bill for that. How much stress did getting an ambulance bill add to your already stressful situation? Oh my gosh, you, it was, you're not working. You're caring for your child that's dying on and off. Um, and she's still sick in the hospital receiving treatment and you get a bill. Oh, you, huh? I think we had three bills in one month for $325. Most of Leandra's trips by ambulance are to two hospitals in Regina. Each trip costs Sarah's family another $325. How many times do you think you called an ambulance? Probably close to 20 times. Every single time you got a bill? Yeah. And some of them weren't because we called 911. It was for transferring her to another hospital for treatment. And they would not, even though she was admitted to the hospital because she was not well enough to go home, they would not pay the bill for the ambulance ride there or back. Yep, they even charge a fee to transfer Leandra between hospitals. And they ding her family for mileage too. $2.30 a kilometer. $1,516.40. $1,500 for a one-way ambulance trip? Yeah. That's what you were billed? Yeah. And you got another bill on top of this? Well, then we had to pay for her to come back. How much was that? Same amount. Another $1,500? Yeah. What did you think after all of that to get a bill for $3,000 for one round trip? I felt terrified that I would have these bills that we just could not afford anymore. Happy birthday, dear Leandra. Happy birthday to Add up all the bills Sarah gets for Leandra's ambulance trips, almost $7,000. I had medical insurance. I maxed out at what I could purchase through my company that I worked for because she took so many trips. Um, the coverage covered one and a half ambulance rides per year. When my child's in the ICU 17 times in one year, one and a half trips does not cover, and you're still paying for that insurance. Did you ever try to get your bill reduced? I asked if they could do something for me, and they offered me payment plans. So that was it, just payment plans? Payment plans, we accept Visa and MasterCard. We want to find out why Sarah's ambulance bills are so high. So we're in Regina to meet the executive director of Saskatchewan's acute and emergency services branch. 
Deborah Jordan. In Saskatchewan, the larger centres like Regina and Saskatoon charge $325 per ambulance ride. How did you come up with that figure? So Erica, you're probably aware that ambulance service, as are many uh, aspects of health care in Canada, are not covered under the Canada Health Act and they're uninsured. Turns out, provinces don't have to cover the cost of an ambulance ride. We do some digging and discover provinces charging ambulance fees across the country at all kinds of rates, from $45 in Ontario to as much as $530 in parts of Manitoba. Should there be such variation across the country? No, there shouldn't be. There shouldn't be a cost, period. Chris Hood is president of the Paramedic Association of Canada. The ability to call an ambulance when you require an ambulance shouldn't really be based on the ability to pay or not. A former health minister in this province, New Brunswick, has said that if there was no charge, people would take ambulances like taxis. What do you think of that argument? If you put policies and procedures in place so that people that don't medically need an ambulance don't get an ambulance. The paramedics may show up, assess the patient, look at the patient. They're professionals, they're healthcare professionals. They should determine when somebody needs to be there. A lot of you seem to agree. We commission a national survey. Ask, should you have to pay for a medically necessary ambulance ride? 75% say no. And in Sarah's home province, where fees are some of the most expensive? In Saskatchewan, almost 80% said there should not be a fee. What is fully insured are physician and hospital services. And we do, through our current program and funding of regional health authorities, cover about 71% of the, the cost of ground ambulance. But that still leaves a lot of the cost downloaded onto people. I like this part of Saskatchewan because it's not totally flat. People like Dave Carr. You said that. Dave met his wife, Catherine, later in life. They settle here in the small rural town of Ituna. Dave's a writer and a romantic. In the moment you were there, the world changed just a little bit in that moment or two. A year and a half ago, Catherine's diagnosed with advanced cancer. For the next two months, they transfer her from hospital to hospital for treatment and palliative care. It took me 50 years to find that girl, and I only had her 15. And that took the most valuable thing I ever found in this life away from me. Shortly after her death, Dave gets something in the mail. Catherine's bill for those ambulance transfers, more than $5,000. I think it's robbery. It wasn't a choice. She couldn't be moved any other way. A basic fee, $245. He's stressed on a fixed pension, can barely afford to make monthly $30 payments. Very trapped, very despondent, and I really started to feel the loneliness. <laughs> The health region agrees to lower his bill, but it's still more than $4,000. Soon, he's getting late payment notices in the mail. And he's being charged interest, so his payments aren't making a dent. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a hard road. The first year was almost impossible. I was bloody angry and I took it out on whoever I could get a hold of to take it out on looking for some help. So does the province offer any relief for people like Dave? We have programs in place like Senior Citizens Ambulance Assistance Program, Family Health Benefits, Supplementary Health uh, that cover fully or mitigate the cost to individuals. Can Dave get some of that help? I want this bill settled. I want it gone. He's driving to the local hospital that sent his wife the bill. I'm hoping we get to talk to somebody. We're tagging along with a hidden camera as Dave goes inside. What will happen when Dave demands a financial break? So there's something wrong with you, Billy, think? Yeah. And... People would die in their vehicles. When ambulance fees force risky choices. And you would see her turning blue. In the car as you're driving her. Yeah. 
How much do ambulances cost where you live? Find out at cbc.ca slash marketplace. We're investigating ambulance fees, joining Dave Carr as he fights back. After his wife passes away, Dave's hit with a $5,000 ambulance bill. On a basic pension, you don't really have a... Uh, Dave's a senior. The bills are stressful. Bills are never a nice thing. Nope. In Saskatchewan, there's a program to help seniors who can't pay. Dave's 70, so he should qualify for some relief. In, in the rule book where it says flat rate $275 per trip, wherever she had, had, would have to go. But get this, because Dave's wife was only 62 when she died, he doesn't qualify for the senior's discount. So... Our producer asks... He's a senior. If he has to pay the bill, there should be a cap. But it goes under the patients. I can't mm -hmm. do anything with the bill. Yeah. I can help with the interest. So can you pull up his file now and get rid of the interest? Yeah, I can pass that. Okay. So, some small consolation. No more interest. Well, how do you feel about it? It sounds like it might be at least partially. Yeah. But what about the rest of that $3,500 bill? Deborah Jordan with Saskatchewan's Ministry of Health. He needs some help now. Isn't there something your government could do to help him? At this point, uh, under existing coverage programs. Uh, Which he doesn't qualify yes, for. Yes, unfortunately not. So, no help for Dave. It'll take him years to pay off that bill. And that promise to at least drop the interest? Dave's latest statement has a note attached, saying the finance department is not authorized to write off interest. With no financial relief, Dave makes a disturbing decision. If he needs an ambulance down the road, he won't call one. Because I can't afford it, I can't pay it. Simple. Sarah Buses Gunn has also faced that terrible dilemma. She and her husband have almost $7,000 in ambulance bills. Her daughter's life-threatening disability means Leandra often can't breathe and needs emergency ambulance trips to hospital. Worrying about the bills when you're worrying about your child dying, those two things should not be in the same picture. In desperation, they sometimes rush their daughter to hospital themselves. One would drive and one would be in the backseat with her, monitoring her vitals, turning up the oxygen, um, just trying to get her there, keep her calm, try to keep yourself calm. Your adrenaline's going, you're shaking, um, just because you're terrified. And you would see her turning blue. In the car as you're driving her? Yeah. And the reason you tried driving her was to avoid an ambulance bill? Basically, yeah, it sounds so pathetic. As a parent, you feel like you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You know, you're taught as a child, if there's an emergency, you call 911. You call 911. Nobody tells you there's a bill attached with that phone call. Sounds like desperate measures, but it may happen more often than you think. In our national survey, 42% of you say a fee might delay you from calling an ambulance. In a heart attack, the heart's a muscle. The longer you delay, the more muscle can be destroyed or, or, or injured. Chris Hood with the Paramedic Association of Canada. Did you ever answer a call where the talk about how much is this going to cost came up? Oh, we've convin I've convinced people to come by ambulance uh, and say, don't worry about the cost. Don't they were worry. actually worried, Absolutely. didn't want to go with they you. They wouldn't go with us. And what was that like for you as a paramedic to oh. see people risking their lives? Yeah, it's, it's terrible. People would die in their vehicles. They would, they would go into cardiac arrest in their vehicles because they decided not to take an ambulance because they couldn't afford uh, the, the fees. In Saskatchewan, 48% say they might delay calling an ambulance because of the fee. That's almost half the population of this province might delay calling a critical care service. I think we would underscore to residents that there should never be any question about um, making that call if they need a call for service because in regulation a service provider and I think that's where we as a health system need to be do a little better job in terms of taking a look at our coverage programs. We show some of our interview with Sarah. 
So you're turning blue? In the car as you're driving her. Yeah. It was hard. They really forced you into situations where you did have to not do what you would want to do. What do you think when you see that? It's heart wrenching. People should be making that call to 911. But she because knew if she did, she would be hit with another bill for $325. On top of the thousands she was already being charged. How does that sit with you? It doesn't sit well, and I don't think it would sit well with anyone, uh, which is why we want to ensure that when people need the service, the billing is not the consideration when someone needs care. But clearly, for some, it is. And now that's prompting one province to act. You don't pay for a fire a department to come and put your fire out. Why is paramedic service or ambulance service any different? Where patients desperate for help get a free ride. If one province can, why can't another? Should you have to pay for an ambulance? Tell us on Facebook and Twitter. Do you know if there's a defibrillator in your clothes? We're investigating the real cost of ambulance fees across the country. Do not move him unless he's in danger, okay? At this 911 dispatch center in Moncton. Yeah, I might have to push that transfer a little bit. People call in from across New Brunswick. If he gets worse in any way before they get there, call us back at 911. Uh, we're on our way. Yeah, welcome. Bye -bye. Incredibly, this is the only province where you no longer pay for an ambulance. The provincial government says it's eliminating the $130 ambulance fee. The fees will be waived for those without private insurance so that no one will have to pay out of pocket. It's all about making sure that the ability to pay isn't, uh, isn't a barrier to accessing health care. Chris Hood is with the Paramedic Association of Canada. You don't pay for a police officer to come to your house when you've got somebody breaking into it. You don't pay for a fire a department to come and put your fire out. Why is paramedic service or ambulance service any different? It's the same thing. And yet most Canadians are still paying for an ambulance ride. But at what cost? In our national survey, one in five say the fee deterred them from calling 911. Sarah Busis Gunn is one of them. It's been over a year since her older daughter Leandra passed away after many trips by ambulance and some harrowing trips on their own. Do you know what an ambulance costs in New Brunswick? No. People don't pay. Tell me why that's upsetting. Because our province created health care. And I just don't understand why they won't support the families that live there and the kids that live there and the people that need the help. Deborah Jordan is with Saskatchewan's Ministry of Health. New Brunswick has decided it's a priority and they're going to do away with ambulance fees. Why not do that here? I think. Each jurisdiction, each province, each territory, which has a responsibility for health services, uh, sets its priorities. And, and that's not a priority in Saskatchewan? Um, I wouldn't say it's not a priority, Erica, but I would say uh, the availability of some services like oncology, closer to home uh, coverage, um, comprehensively so for... President. I think as we do across many things, uh, we can look and learn across jurisdictions. Maybe there's something else Saskatchewan could learn. We do some more digging and find out Saskatchewan is the only province that charges a patient every time they're transferred between health centres. For Sarah Busis Gunn and Dave Carr, that added up to thousands of dollars, fees that wouldn't be charged anywhere else. Why does Saskatchewan charge? for transferring a patient between hospitals. That is something over the course of many years that has been uh, brought forward as should that change in Saskatchewan. Is this something you would be willing to commit to looking at now, not charging patients when you move them between hospitals? Uh, no, but all of our programs 
are reviewed and updated on a regular basis, and certainly that would be one area that would fall into that regular review. For now, Dave Carr has to keep struggling to make the minimum payment on his wife's bill. A couple of weeks after our interview, we get an email from Dave's local health authority. They finally promised to eventually write off the interest. I would hope that through all of this and possibly waves that have started, perhaps some things will change. Here's a fruit smoothie. And Sarah? Her parents pay off that $7,000 ambulance bill with their credit card. Sarah and her family have moved to Campbell River, BC. I love Saskatchewan. I love the province and my family. Um, the government drove me away. The one right there. BC's ambulance fee, only $80. Peace of mind. Ready? I feel a lot more confident in this province's healthcare system and the support that my family has and my, my child's future family will have. Her biggest hope though, one day all provinces do away with ambulance fees completely. An emergency service, she says, no parent should hesitate to use. Next week on Marketplace. Healthy request. Sounds good. We're shopping for lousy labels. Every aisle of the supermarket is preying on us. Popular names. Garden vegetable. Bread with veggies. And marketing games. Companies are allowed to say whatever they can get away with saying. Now, they're like teenagers. Their job is to push the envelope. Everything from breakfast. Start the day with Nutella. To dinner. We, as consumers, have to be more educated. Delicious. It's a sham. It shouldn't be a breakfast food. It should be like a dessert. You'd have to have 177 servings to get the omega-3 that you get out of one serving of salmon. It's bull That's what it is. Are you being served the truth or food fiction?